I mentioned in part one of these videos that I was concerned that there would not be enough windows for my two car DMU. This was because each of the two packs I purchased contained a slightly different selection of windows. Happily however, this was not the case and I have now successfully glazed both cars and I think they look good. One of the things that spoil the Lima model to my eyes is the huge tension lock couplings at the driving ends of both units. Now I don't ever want to couple anything to the units so the couplings can come off. I will leave the couplings at the inner ends of the cars as they are needed and in any case they're less conspicuous. As can be seen in this shot of the underside of the leading bogey, the coupling is moulded onto the bogey and is therefore an integral part of it. The only way to remove it is to saw it off. So make sure you never want to use it again because reattaching it will be a bit difficult, although not impossible. I think the sawing operation is best done with the bogey separated from the chassis. However, the seating unit hides the bogey fixing lug, so must be removed first. Before doing this, the bulkhead behind the driver's cab should be removed, taking care not to damage the very fine fixing lugs on either side. The seating unit is fixed to the chassis here and here and is simply a clip fit. The bogey on the unpowered car is attached to the chassis by a fixing lug here. To remove the bogey, simply squeeze the fixing lug with a pair of pliers and the bogey should drop off. The unpowered bogey on the power car picks up current and the bogey is held on by a removable terminal. Using pliers simply lift the centre pin on the bogey a little and slide the terminal off. The bogey should now be released. I have decided to cut the coupling off just behind the coupling bar, taking care not to damage the bogey during the process. I have now removed the couplings from both bogies and I think they look much better. The end that I have removed the couplings is here and here. I will now be able to press on with detailing the buffer beams. But before starting work it's always a good idea to look at the prototype. From what I can make out, most DMUs had the same or similar pipework, but not always in exactly the same place. This picture, for instance, shows a Class 108 at Cranmore on the East Somerset Railway. Whereas this picture is of a Class 117 on the Gloucester and Warwickshire Railway. I'm not sure what all of them do but the photo shows a great selection of pipes and cables. It certainly makes the Lima buffer beam look extremely bare. I should make it clear at this stage that my aim is not to produce a 100% accurate rendition of the real thing, but merely to end up with something that gives a good general impression. I have been unable to find any detailing kits anywhere, so I'm going to have to bodge together something myself. I will start with the easy part. The screw coupling that sits firmly in the middle of the buffer beam. These are available in either kit form or ready assembled as shown here. I purchased mine from Peter's Spares. Start by simply removing the moulded lemur hook with a sharp scalpel 
and file the buffer beam smooth. Then drill a couple of fine holes in the centre of the buffer beam and join the holes together with a sharp scalpel to form a vertical slot. I'm not going to fit the coupling at this stage as I think it will get in the way of fitting the other items later. As you can see, A, the slot is not vertical. I did say I was going to bodge it. And B, I've also drilled some more holes for some of the fittings. Here is a complete set of fittings for both ends of my two car set. I have made some crude vacuum pipes from brass wire and some other cables from paper clips. There are some backing plates made from black plastic card which I will glue behind the Lima buffer beam to aid assembly and also hopefully add strength to the finished product. The jumper cables and sockets were made from thin wire and by laboriously filing some black plastic card. They go on the left hand side as you look from the front. I hope that once painted they won't look too bad. Finally there are sockets made from white plastic rod to be fitted to the right hand side as you look from the front. The fittings to go on the buffer beams have now been given a coat of primer. As always I used Halford's Rattle Can Primer as I find it is easy to spray on and takes paint very well. The points on my layout are all of the Insul Frog variety so to improve slow running I always add extra pickups to locos wherever possible. On diesels this is fairly easy. The trailing bogies on Lima diesels pick up current on one side only so to improve running they need to pick up current from both sides. The first stage is simply to glue a piece of phosphor bronze strip to the underside of the trailing bogey. A piece of 0.5mm wire was used to pick up current from the backs of the insulated wheels on the bogey. It was bent to shape and soldered to the phosphor bronze strip. Current is then taken to the motor by this yellow wire which is also soldered to the phosphor bronze strip. It will later be painted brown to disguise it. A hole was made in the chassis for the wire to pass through. It was laid roughly along the chassis and the end soldered to the power bogey. The wire will be hidden once the seating unit is refitted. Most of the pipes, sockets and cables have now been painted black and glued in the appropriate places on the buffer beams. I think they are already looking good and once weathered I think they will definitely pass muster. The corridor connections and exhausts have now been painted. I was unsure what colour to apply to the exhaust but luckily a real 117 was being overhauled at Buckfastley on the South Devon Railway. The colour on its exhausts was a sort of slightly rusty brown stainless steel, so I settled for that. It was made up from a mixture of orange and bauxite colours, together with a large amount of silver. The chassis and bogies have now been weathered, or dirted if you like, with my favourite underframe colour as used on my Class 47, and the details picked out. Again the real 117 at Buckfastley was a real help when it came to deciding what colours the various items should be. The close up shots reveal my painting is not as accurate as it could be but I'm hoping it won't notice when the units are in operation on the layout. Axle boxes and springs 
were gently dry brushed with a dark colour to simulate oil spillage and staining. The interiors have now been repainted and passengers and a driver at each end have been added. The excellent Railcar UK website was used to find out what colours were used when the real 117s were first delivered. It seems that Lima's overall form colour was probably not right. The seats should be maroon, the floor and driver's seats green and the partitions are light brown for mica. The exact shades were not given so I've used my imagination a little. The opportunity was also taken to paint the driver's control panels grey and some of the instruments and controls black or red. The body sides and ends were masked off with paper prior to airbrushing the roofs. The curved sections next to the roofs on the inner ends of the cars were protected with masking fluid. The roofs have now been airbrushed in a matte dark grey colour and the exhaust pipes and corridor connections replaced. The sides of the unit have not been weathered as DMUs were put through a carriage wash reasonably often. The ends however were a different matter and accumulated more grime. My usual weathering technique was used. A thin wash of a dirty colour was liberally applied and allowed to become touch dry. Then a cotton bud, slightly moistened with thinners, was used to remove most of it. Train reporting numbers were produced on PowerPoint and glued to the head code boxes. I hope that 2N08 describes the service from PAR to Newquay and 2N07 the return journey, but I'm open to correction on this point. The one thing I am certain of is that the pipes, cables and screw couplings, now weathered, look so much better than the old huge Lima tension lock coupling. The yellow wire taking current from the trailing bogey to the motor has now been disguised by painting it a mucky brown colour to blend in with the bogey and underframe. I think the screw couplings should be secured up on the coupling hook on the buffer beam when not in use, but I've left them hanging for the photos. Ideally the buffers should have been replaced with ones with larger heads, but I was unable to source any, so I have left the Lima ones on. The glue and glaze holds the windows in place as they are very light in weight, but it is not strong like a proper glue and it is only applied to a one millimeter edge around the windows. So care must be taken when lifting the units and placing them on the layout. Don't apply any pressure to the windows themselves as it's too easy to push them into the bodies of the unit. Don't ask me how I know. I'm not sure if the people and drivers are really noticeable and they probably won't be once the unit is in service on the layout, but I know they're there. I had thought I might fit windscreen wipers to the cab fronts, but for the time being I've decided not to. It would be too fiddly to scratch build some to the correct shape and I've so far been unable to source any on the internet. Let's just hope it doesn't rain. I said at the start of part one that after my modifications I hoped that at the end a better 117 would result. I'll let you be the judge, but I reckon it has. So that's all for now, and see you next time.